45 men and women pursue an extraordinary dream. 22 countries, 19 months, a voyage around the world. Tall Ship Chronicle. There was an extremely violent political coup d'etat here in Fiji, exactly one year before the tall ship Picton Castle sailed into port. That's been bad for tourism. But for tourists like us, it's great. The place has emptied, kind of like our ship. We're not as much in Fiji as we are in flux. Whenever we pull into port, people hit the ground running. But this time, they're running away. Our head cook has packed up his knives and split. It smells like our assistant cook is about to follow suit. The first mate had to go back to his real job, and that's not even the half pint of it. For the first time on the entire trip, we have something bad to say about Sloan. He's abandoned us for his real family. Our bad water and infected sores have caused the lowest morale we've had all voyage. Now that we're in port, we're all hoping to boost our spirits. Some of my crewmates are doing that by immersing themselves in this foreign culture. Me, though, I've opted to go to a more recognizable place. This freaks me out. Like, I haven't watched this since it was on TV. Like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know, three years ago? Two, uh, yeah, three years ago. Before Lauren and I hooked up and went camera crazy on this trip, I was pretty busy as a film actor and a comedic script writer. Lauren was always curious about that side of me, so five months ago, my proud mother sent some sample VHS copies of my work. Little did we know, VHS is not a worldwide standardized format. Mrs. This is not going to happen. It's been very frustrating. I don't know. It's not, it, the tape is refusing to rewind. It's just another one of these machines that they say, oh, yeah, that'll play your thing. OK, if I seem nervous, it's because I am. To me, this is opening night all over again. And if I get a bad review from this audience, my precious ego will be shattered. It just freaks me out to, <laughs> to see it at all. Why is it in black and white? I was trying to see. We don't know it, but back on the ship, our assistant cook has received a bad review. So bad, in fact, she's leaving. When our head cook, Dennis, left two days ago, everyone thought Lori would move right on up the ladder. Instead... The day Dennis left, I finally had a meeting with the captain, and he told me that Dennis was leaving, or Dennis was gone, and that he had hired a new cook. And at that meeting, he told me that I wasn't considered for the position of chief cook, and I wouldn't be doing any provisioning because he doubted my capabilities of it. He didn't know that I could do it. And then he told me something about something that I had... Anyway, he told me that uh, if he took a vote that day, the majority of the crew would vote to have me fired. And I think that was the deciding factor. Me, on the other hand, I'd vote to have Lauren in every audience I perform for. Yeah, well, not that. That guy, yeah. What? Cheap laughs, nervous laughs, confused laughs, I don't care what kind they are, just as long as they're laughs. And he was right, too. I mean, hockey moms go fast Standard comedy there. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what happens when they let me in and it's right comedy. <laughs> the boat, if I had taken the vote any time the two months before either one of them got off, the boat by the crew, should there be one, would be to get rid of both of them and it would have been pretty close to unanimous. And that's what I told her. Um. That's just, I mean, that's not true. Like, some people had maybe had personality differences with Lori, but she was a damn good cook, you know? Um, and she just 
she just cared about it too, you know, like she was always going to fresh she markets was. and like for looking for really good stuff. I think it's nice wash for your for your boat. I like the big ones. Personally, I, yeah. Lori and I didn't, do, you know, we didn't see eye to eye that well. We didn't get along, but you know, I respected her in the galley. She was, she would, she when she did cook, she would bust out some great meals. Maybe it's for the good of the ship. I don't know. I've talked to a few people about it, and uh, they're hoping that I'm leaving, not believing it. But it was hard going back to cook after that conversation. You must be wondering why she'd even bother to cook a last supper for us. Well, perhaps it's because she's into exotic tropical ingredients. I've learned something about weevils. Weevils actually burrow right in the noodle. I thought they just lived in the packages and the weevil right there. They burrow right inside, so these are, these are all full of weevils. And I was told that you'll get used to eating weevils. So I guess this is the point in the trip when you, that happens. Some people, though, don't want to eat weevils. In fact, they don't want to be here. Trainee Moises is just part of a mini mass exodus. Well, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on that I don't like. Uh, I was wondering about uh, flights from uh, here to Thailand. Thailand? Yeah, Bangkok. Yeah. This is not the first time Moises has felt the need to get away from the Picton Castle. Like sometimes it feels like a waste of time being on board because of all the sailing and just in each island we stay like two weeks and there's nothing else to do. Like it's a really long time in each island so. And I don't know, I need to have some freedom once in a while. I had the thought of, uh, of leaving permanently because things weren't going uh, like perfect or the way I wanted them to be. But after talking to the captain and reconsidering my options, it's, I don't know, I, is that kind of cool? I'd rather keep this option open and, uh, and I do want to come back. Part of what he means right there is that if he splits permanently, he'll only get a tiny percentage of his ticket price back. But money is not a big issue for Moises. His decision to retain his bunk is based on a far more important commodity. Well, mainly, I, yeah, mainly the people, like my friends, my 35 brothers and sisters I've met. It's, it's amazing the love you, <laughs> you feel for those people. Trainee Charlie is in the same boat as Moises. He hasn't been his happy self on board lately either. So when Mo goes on vacation, Chuck Wagon's wheels will also roll. Oh, I'm going to, um, uh, I don't know. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, a little trip. Sydney. He says he's going to Sydney, but I think that's just stop number one. See, Charlie needs cash. On the beach here, it's all foolish fun and games. But if he goes home to Massachusetts, he could work at the boat yard, make some serious coin, and then come back to the ship just as the New England winter rears its ugly head. Jeannie is also going. <laughs> somewhere. Go. Where are you going, I don't know where we're going. <laughs> Kayaking. <laughs> we know where she's not going. She's not going aloft to find thrills anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because she's not going to be on board anymore. Okay. And, uh, it's, been, okay. it's been great. Come on. Oh, boy. Take okay. care. All right. Bye bye. Jeannie came on this trip to work for Kate's book distributing organization. That working relationship has ended in what for Jeannie is the worst way imaginable. The worst thing that could happen? I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Just. I mean, I guess one of the things I'm kind of scared about is just being at sea for like long periods of time and just, you know, being able to deal with other people, but I'm sure that things will work out. Or maybe she's leaving because of the food. I'm skimming as many weevils out as I can. Why bother? Us meat eaters are always after more protein. So skeletons or something. Vegetarian now. There is no veggie. There's just weevil. <laughs> mm, that's veggie with weevil. 
I love taunting the vegetarians. And Julie is the staunchest leaf eater on board. You know, she once told me she wouldn't eat the clam chowder because of her, quote, compassion for the clam. I'm impressed, though, with how she handles the critter lasagna. Just like, it, when it cooks, it loses, a, it loses its legs and kind of antennas. Right. That's talk more move. But it's still a weevil, nonetheless. Maybe her good humor is out of respect for Lori. Here's the Lori. That's where you're going. I'm gonna miss this guy. Wade is quitting. Are you gonna miss me? That's the question. Sure I am. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. The Tall Ship Chronicles cameraman has been a friend and colleague of mine for years before this gig. So what are you gonna do without me, man? Huh? I don't know what I'm gonna do without you. I don't know. You're the only person on board the ship who knows me. <laughs> and I know that Wade's heart has been fragile ever since Lunenburg. For this job, he had to kiss goodbye everything he loves. His wife, his daughter. Hell, at the weird equator crossing hazing ritual, he even had to kiss his hair goodbye. When I started to realize that Wade might not make it, I turned the camera on him. Compared to other jobs you've had, do you like this job? I haven't had any other jobs. As a cameraman, you goof. <laughs> uh, no, this one is, uh, is right up there. Doesn't get much better than this. Really? Nope. Eh, I hear the words, but I don't hear any conviction. A month after that, his wife Gabe showed up in Tahiti. That recharged his batteries for a while, but now, those batteries are dead. We're eight months into this now, and I just, uh, I just can't do it. Um, I thought, I thought that I could do the 19 months, but it's just too long a time to be away from my family. And, uh, I have to get home. And I called home. She picked up the phone, and I said, "Hi, honey." And she just started to sob, just cried, and she was just, she wept uncontrollably for a minute on the phone. And uh, then I knew I had to go home. There was no, no question. See you in Bali? Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wade has kept his job option open, but I don't think he'll sail with us again. He won't be thinking of me at all. I wonder if Phil will sail with us again. At practically every port, the captain tells him he can stay on, but just until the next port. When we leave Fiji, though, he'll finally get to know his future. Like, I really, this is where I want to be, but I don't really know if I'm going to be able to stay. We're supposed to leave today. So what time do we have? It's 11. 11. OK, well, this, we're going to have a long day ahead of us, so. Water is over there. We want to top up our water. And we can top up our water. The fix it job we did on the rusty tanks last month is holding up beautifully. And that has a great ripple effect. The vibe on board has dramatically improved. In fact, a lot of things on board have improved. Not everything is ship shape, of course. We're sailing without a professional cook, but. You get the controls right here. So, uh, we do have a new chief engineer, the a new chief mate. Main top mistaysail sheet needs to be rove off. See up there? Yeah. A new third mate, Is that better? No. a new trainee crewmate, and a whole new way of sailing. Stand by to uh, let go and set sail. Unfortunately, that new way is hoist in her jib badly, clumsily, forgetfully. We haven't been sailing for so long that we're as rusty as the water used to be. Let go of the port upper topsail brace. Let go of the port upper topsail brace. Let go of the brace. Let it go. Thank you. Come along, walk along, heave along, ho along, come along, pull along. What? Hands the braces. Today would be good. The problem is you're in port for two weeks or almost three weeks, going to pubs and carrying on and 
getting all distracted by fun stuff ashore. Boy, he's had weather brace off. He's it off. He's it off. He's it off. Oh wow! Well, wow! Well, wow! Well, he's it right off. They're a little groggy from three weeks in port. But I expect that. The more the captain likes you, the more he snidely lectures you on your little mistakes like slamming locker lids. Look what you did. Clearly, the captain likes Phil a lot. See, we're going to do that. See, this is what happens when this breaks. Well, see, it, it breaks. It breaks the lid. So imagine, Phil, that that is not a piece of rope, but a very, very important part of your body. Imagine that that is something that's very private and secure to you, and this is what you just did to it. With that metaphor in mind, you will never do that again. Okay, <laughs> fix that. Like that sort of Try this metaphor out in your mind. For months, the captain has been leading Phil in an oddly affectionate slow dance. All the way. Just hoist away. Come on, lean on it, Phil. Don't be wussing there. The dance started just days before the ship left Lunenburg when the captain asked the 17-year-old if he'd like to volunteer his services just as far as Panama. Then the captain swung him to Tahiti, spun him through Rarotonga, and dipped him in Fiji. Then Phil started to go insane, wanting to know exactly where and how this dance would end. In this situation, it's like, it's like I'm doing something, but I don't know if I'm really doing it. Like I really, this is where I want to be, but I don't really know if I'm going to be able to stay. It was up to him. He had to prove, show himself. It, I didn't decide in Lunenburg he was going around the world. That, that wasn't like withholding information from him. He had to show himself. And I wasn't going to tell, you know, you can't tell him that either. You know, you, I, you know the, he's got to show who he is to get this. I mean, I'm going to work just as hard, but, you know, you're always like sort of like analyzing how you're doing, you know, making, sh you know, like, so just sort of, I don't know. See, and Julie in particular said that he was, uh, the bosun was that he was, you know, putting a lot of extra time in off watch, you know, really getting as much out of this as he could. And, and he was, you know, he would get off watch, then he would turn to again with her to do some work. And that's dedicated. That's that's what I was looking for, something like that. So this isn't just a, you know, punch in the clock. I mean, I was supposed to get off in Fiji, and we had been here for two weeks, and he hadn't said anything. And then I was tying a knot, or um, tying the boat up and he kind of took it from me and showed me how he would do it and he's like, I think you need to stay to Lunenburg. And I was like, okay. That's the captain, reserved beyond belief. Even though he's been invited to stay, Phil still has no idea how the captain really feels about him. He's doing great. He's a good kid. Stop the presses. He's smiling. And complimentary? And unabashedly proud of Phil? Hold it like that, okay? I was pretty excited when I was a young kid to get on my first square rigger, and I think I was a little bit like that. It's your bloody useless hand out of the way. Maybe that's why the captain has turned this young sailor into his favorite protege. Because through Phil, he gets to relive his own coming of age. When we set sail from Fiji, we had no cook. Uh, basically, the captain told me I was cooking. And I said, all right, I am. Translation, we still have no cook. Jen was a paying trainee who was supposed to have left the ship back in Tahiti. The captain has allowed her to stay on for free, provided she does whatever jobs need doing. That's the other cook. Emily paid for the whole trip. She's volunteering just to help Jen out. So how long are you guys doing this for? Until the new cook comes. Which is? Who knows? I've heard Vanuatu, but... We're going to be there for a while, so I don't really know. <laughs> Have you sailed before? No. <laughs> the ship's newest newbie, Aletta, is also here until Vanuatu. Yes, I'm in the middle of my gap year before going to university, so I'm busy doing lots of new, exciting things, and this is one of them. We decided to go with little Chinese tonight. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Sweet and yeah. sour and thick and... I mean, like, we cook what we want to eat, so... Listen, it's gone all right so far. <laughs> yeah. That's because they haven't served anything yet. We ate Dennis's food for seven months. Anything's an improvement. Michael, who is a, um, our first mate, is a trained shipwright and ship's carpenter. And in Germany, that means you went through a five-year apprenticeship. I'm still a neophyte sailor. To me, Billy defined the term first mate. Well, tell you what, how about I go nuts on you? 
four, this guy? Five. People who want to do carpentry workshops, he's got a project he wants everyone to do. Huh, maybe he'll turn out great. Jen and Emily's sweet and sour chicken with rice, on the other hand, turned out more like chalky glue with glommy slop. <laughs> no one complains, though. Speak ill of the performance of a substitute cook, and maybe it'll be your turn to cook. We learned something today, Nikali. <laughs> we were getting maybe a little too cocky, maybe a little big for our britches, as they say. And we'd like to <laughs> apologize to all of the Victor Castle crew who ate our chicken tonight. We had kind of big plans. We wanted sweet and sour! And it was pasty and weird. Who was in the chicken? <laughs> uh, we're gonna redeem ourselves, we promise. Breakfast will be delicious. Nailed him, sucker. The banana pie is excellent. Hell yummy. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're one of our biggest fans there. Uh, Did you rehearse this line? Did they tell you? No, I didn't get any notes. Sorry. Of course, there is one guy on board who knows he'll never have to cook, no matter how much he complains. Chocolate oh. and banana oh. pancakes. Oh. Oh. What the hell is that? That is something even a gourmet chef would be proud of if he'd managed to turn them out on this finicky, 110-year-old diesel-burning stove. No problem. Thanks, sir. Wow. Minor celebrities. <laughs> For the entire summer before coming on this voyage, I was hammering away at my badly built house in rural Newfoundland. When the first mate said he was going to give carpentry courses, I jumped right in. Can you keep your hands somewhere close, like here? Maybe further up. Like, wow, I get the shock out of it. Did you hear that? Maria said she got a shock, but I didn't believe her because she didn't budge. I should know better. I once saw Maria get hit with a flying 4x4, four four, and she didn't budge then either. So you jump and just. That does give me a shock. That's not just right. Ignore it. Jesus, just, just ignore it. it. <laughs> I mean, just ignore just, it. If you just hold, if you just hold. Oh! <laughs> Jesus! Just hold on. Do they make wooden chisels? Come on. Ow! <laughs> they should meet the, the entire surface, like uh, from the back to the cutting edge. Okay. Now you should get some shots. So. <laughs> Whoa. So have you ever worked in a training vessel before then? No. No? But you've worked in a capacity where you've had to teach people, I guess. Just in terms yeah. of, yeah. yeah. It's pretty obvious. That is challenge now. That is challenge now. <laughs> people who can't learn. Welcome to the old dog school. It's the same in any aspect of um, sh the ship's life. If you If you work at something, then you get the experience, and then you can teach others. That's just a normal process um, of learning. Our bosun Julie teaches every day. Fucking See, because this is going under two. It's kind of funny. That's wrong, isn't it? But it's not herself she was talking about. When you're going, when you're going on your ditty bag, yes. you want to. It's Tom. Like that. You have to, and also remember that it's going to get smaller. The hole's going to get smaller as you're putting yeah. more strands through the. Like that. You want to lay it back in. In the natural way it was. Six months ago, Tom was the captain's first sail making student. And that, rub that under. Should we get to that mark there? Okay. Then he went solo. Yes, I should use this yes. one. And now he gets asked for more advice than Dear Abby. You see how this is laid sort of like in this direction? Yes. And then it gets straight here? Yes. It's just, it's too tight. Oh, okay. If you do something with confidence, people will come to you and and ask you questions because you you know you, you appear to be confident in what you're doing and you know what you're doing. So they they touch together on the inside. Yes, and but then it's space out here. And the outside. Yeah. I just woke up and I got caught. Tom is not the only one pursuing a new perspective. Yeah, this is only my second time up. The first time I just came for practice. I haven't been up before when the ship's been sailing, actually. It's great. Um, just taking each sail gradually. And then finally, I think 
in Fiji. I went up to the gallant, the gallant in the Royal. And you can just do it. That's all there is to it. Eventually. Oh, look at you guys. <laughs> Had a little bit more practice. Yeah. In the real world, people practice to prepare for a big event. Here, it's the same. But we forget that because we're always too busy practicing. Okay, here's the gig. It's look out. You are literally looking out. If there's, you know, anything, anything at all. When in doubt, report. And you're going to report it to the uh, officer on duty. Who is? Who, in our case, is the captain. Don't be intimidated. He wants this information. Right now, the captain has information that we don't have or want. And that information is this. The big event we've been practicing for is on its way. Tomorrow morning, the wind is going to be screaming. The sea is going to be boiling. And based on our collective sailing ability, the Picton Castle is going to be either swimming or sinking. Thanks to a giant low pressure system approaching from the southeast, the choppy swells are getting pretty damn big. And the wind is getting pretty damn strong. So strong, some sails are taken in before they shred. Loose objects on deck and in the hold are tied down. At 8 a.m., it's all hands on deck. We have sailed over 12,000 nautical miles now, and this is the first time in open water that the captain has called for all hands. Something big is up. And I don't mean me. I have been cut down by a crippling tropical virus. He's got like stomach cramps, stuff like that. I know there was something going around in the beach. Um, I don't know. And the, the weather probably doesn't help. I don't think he's seasick, but I think it's just, it adds to the general thing. Michael told me it's a tropical disturbance of an unusual sound. <laughs> yeah. This hurricane in the making is coming at us in waves. Gale force winds descend on the ship. To make things even worse, our onboard weather warning system is showing an even uglier storm to the north, and this fresh hell is trying to push us in that direction. means the wind is consistently blowing 70 kilometers an hour. In his calmest yelling voice, the captain lays it on the line. If one of these waves snatches you and pulls you in, you're dead. Think about that. If someone gets swept overboard, the rest of us will just sail away. Not because turning around is too dangerous, because it's literally impossible. Just think about that. That's what every sailor on deck is thinking right now.
No one even bothers to ask if we'd resort to using our small rescue boat. Giant waves have already wreaked havoc with it, and it's hanging 12 feet above the waterline. Launching it in this would be suicide. While Andy secures it better, the captain orders every last square sail to be taken in. Just shows you that yeah, there is no control. The ocean has the control. The very last sail is taken in. Maria heads out to do the scariest job, tying it down. Uh, Maria was left out there. We took one just incredibly huge rock aft and then back down forward. And uh, I just I yelled for her to hang on, hang on, hang on. Hand out, and as soon as she was able to grab me, got her back up onto the deck. She could have easily gone over, and then that would have been it. It's only 10 a.m. This working day has barely begun. Usually, the captain's job is to strictly give orders. He never pulls on lines. Today is not usual. Same thought in mind, the captain orders netting to be strong. Why? To prevent the souls on deck from being washed away. Everything on board the ship that's not lashed down has been thrown about like a pinball. Or so they tell me. I've slept through the slamming and I'm sleeping still. Do you have any idea how long it's supposed to last? I'm guessing until it's over. With the wheel lashed down as a safety precaution, we are hove to. That means we have all the control of a castaway cork. and the crew is just kind of dealing and, and making things happen and, and uh, it's everyone just kind of works together and uh, and pulls it off and I think the way that it went 
probably gave everyone a lot of confidence in each other and uh, in the ship because it was some pretty crazy weather. And, I mean, she handled it really well too. It's what, in part, I suppose I was looking for, that kind of adrenaline rush, exhilarating, um, not terror, not fear. Fun, actually. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Fun. The only way I handle it is to have fun. I, mean, I guess that's an example of fear, just kind of make the best of it. And... I remember just watching all this activity and thinking, you know, it's a great story, you know, but geez, there's stories that you just never hear. You know, the people who are in, you know, worse storms than this you never get the telephone. Jim's wrong. Storms don't have to be worse than this for sailors to be lost. Later, we will learn that a boat just to the southwest of us sank. The lone man on board? Well, in weather like this, you already know what happens to anyone who gets separated from their vessel. Okay, that, that gale we had, that gale is, um, it's moved south, it's, and it's now almost hurricane force. It's called cleaning the aftermath. <laughs> the storm is over, but its effects remain. The gale force winds ate our flag. But that's okay. We were going to launch a new flag today anyways. You see, today is July 1st. Canada Day! <laughs> That's trying to be patriotic halfway around the world. <laughs> oh, Canada, we stand on God for me. You gotta stand up for it. Check those out! <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that! The crew is about a third Canadian, which in terms of American Canadian population is, 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 you could call it, that's a lot. You know, I think our crew, the non-Canadians, and I think a lot of our Canadians too, have learned a lot about Canada by that sort of intermixing. Hey, you little hoser. Aww. She's wearing a freaking cape. I know. <laughs> <laughs> mixing with all these yanks after sort of growing up saying, you know, thinking more or less you can get away with every snide comment you can about an American at any given time. This is fun. Representative of the States. It changes your perspective. <laughs> My perspective, though, remains unchanged. The glamour of it all, eh? What's wrong with you? I don't know. I got some kind of bug or something. I can't eat. I haven't, I haven't eaten anything in a couple of days now. You haven't moved in a couple of days. No, oh, yeah. Sleeping 14, 16 hours a day. I don't know. Sucks. Happy Canada Day. Woo! <laughs> This has been a celebratory few days for Maria. Not only is she alive and Canadian, she's also American. God bless America. <laughs> That's right, she holds two passports. <laughs> what made you guys decide to do this today? Emily and Jen made us. Yeah, of course. You made them do this? Yeah, yeah. we're withholding all sex if we didn't cook lunch. <laughs> Again? Yeah. No, we just wanted something. We needed burgers for 4th of July, and we thought it would probably be bad to, like, yeah, hey, Emily and Jen, you need to make burgers for 4th of July, so we volunteer. Give him a break. Adds a little sympathy. For who? For Emily and Jen. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. No utensils, no proper tools. I don't know how cooking survive in here. The next cook to try and cut the mustard in here is a woman who knows what she's getting into. She's worked on tall ships before, and she's worked for the captain. So for somebody who is like a professional chef, <laughs> it's a different aspect of chefing. 
there's a different smell coming from the Picton Castle today. It's, I don't know, it's foreign to me. It's coming from the galley. My name is Leslie Weiss. I'm from Cold Spring Harbor, Long Island, New York. Oh my God, it's cleaning products. Back home, I do, I'm a caterer. I have my own catering business. So I just, I got I burned out basically from, I, I, not from the cooking, but just from the, the business aspect, from the catering business, because it was a lot. It got big, so yeah, I got tired of it. So I'm here, and this is it's simpler. <laughs> really? And, yeah. Yeah, it's only 50 people three times a day. It would be a lot better than answering the phone at 10.30 at night, you know, and planning parties for 200, and, you know, ordering tent, chairs, rentals. You just got to get this and wipe the tops of them off. So stuff at the top for all the splash marks are and stuff. Are there any better um, dust pans, brushes than this one here? As they say, a new broom sweeps clean. Our newest cook yeah. has only been here for a New York second. And what's this for? <laughs> she hasn't even unpacked yet. Okay. <laughs> when in doubt, throw it out. I think a lot's gonna be going out. <laughs> when she hears about the pasta with bowl weevils, she has the reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> That'll go on a midnight dump. When nobody's up, I'll <laughs> slowly remove it. When Mikkel introduces himself to Leslie, he tells her something he hasn't told me. I'm the off-going engineer. Off-going? It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on my way home to get my seat time so I can get on to get my license. Mikkel makes just a hundred bucks a week as our engineer. Obviously, he ain't here for the money. He's here so he can rack up enough sea time to qualify for his Danish mate's license. Recently I contacted my school back home and they said that they're not going to give me any credit for what I'm doing here. So uh, if I wanted to start school in January, I basically had to go home right now. Uh, I need to get on with my, with my career. Air tanks are closed. Mikkel actually came to the Picton Castle so he could work on deck. He was ordered to fill in in the engine room for just a few weeks. That was a year and a half ago. But he never complained, and he never left because he was concerned about what would happen to us if we were to sail without an engineer. You try to look at the switch. The switch. It's the guy is too nice. Uh, full pitch. He has an unwavering penchant for loyalty, kindness, <laughs> and dressing up in women's clothes. The pride of Denmark. <laughs> he wants no sad goodbyes. No problem. But it's just like a big circle of friends that's always hanging out together. And just to leave that because you want to go to school instead, that's a hard decision to make. I'm excited about leaving the ship, but I'm also very, very sad about leaving the ship. I'm going to be yeah, kind of lonely. Have a good voyage. Good luck at school. Thanks a lot. Back underway, there are a few thousand stowaways I wish we had left behind. I can't tell if they're, oh yeah. Mm. The white stuff in the pasta is eggs. Really? Yeah. Oh, look at the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> Leslie said she would do it, and now she's done it. The evil weevil pasta is going, going, gone. It's got weevils in it. It's not edible. I wouldn't eat it unless we were starving. It looks just like my bunk, only there's less of them. <laughs> Steer west northwest. West northwest. Yeah. In the parcel, blue up. She's coming. There's a reef there. We don't want to hit the reef. Uh, I've never been to this one before. This was recommended to me by uh, some folks I know, and uh, looks like a nice anchorage. And there's a nice village. There's supposed to be some friendly folks here. So we'll go find out. Bannam Bay, Vanuatu, South Pacific Ocean. Sounds primitive, hey? The last recorded act of cannibalism on this island was in 1969. Come on over. Come 
Man, those things are never okay. Don't worry, we won't get eaten in Bannon Bay. But when we leave this place, the population of the Picton Castle will be forever changed. Next time on Tall Ship Chronicles, Vanuatu exposes its charms. Our new cook looks like toast. I can't do this. I am not a machine. And we face a medical emergency. The Picton Castle calling again for Dr. Khan. With no doctor. So we have her lying down. That's all next time on Tall Ship Chronicles. Yeah.